Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Playing the Moldovans at Tennis by Tony Hawks, uh, the British comedian, not the skateboarder. I'm going to read you the blurb, I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. It's non-fiction. All I knew about Moldova were the names of 11 men printed on the inside back page of my newspaper. None of them sounded to me like they were any good at tennis. An eccentric wager finds Tony Hawks, a man who loves an unusual challenge, bound for the little known Eastern European state of Moldova, his mission, to track down members of the country's football team and persuade them to play him at tennis. The bizarre quest ultimately has little to do with tennis and football, but instead turns into an extraordinary journey involving the Moldovan underworld, gypsies, chronic power shortages, near kidnap, and an exceptional and surprisingly tender relationship with his host family. Follow the fortunes of Tony in this hilarious and often moving adventure as it takes him from Moldova onwards towards nor onwards to Northern Ireland, leading to an excitement denouement in, Na in Nazareth and the naked truth of the bet's final outcome. So he starts off, he goes to see a band called the Flying Postman because uh, um, they've got a Moldovan in them. Uh, they're a Beatles tribute band and he says, uh, I rushed around to watch. Four young guys ambled onto the stage and fussed around their instruments and amplifiers, almost oblivious to their audience in a way that only musicians can. They were in 60s outfits but didn't seem to be trying to resemble the Beatles in any way. The tallest of the four strode proudly to the microphone. We are not like the early Beatles. We are like the Flying Postmen now, he announced, somewhat arrogantly to a stunned crowd. My name is Andre. I am not Paul. So yeah, he goes over to Moldova and uh, someone says, the worst thing about it is the manholes. The manholes? Yes, they have no covers. They are made of metal, so organized gangs steal them and melt them down for profit. I see, nice mix. Pitch darkness and random holes in the ground. Yes, we have many injuries. And this is again because of problems with the power um, and it's deemed not worth lighting the streets at night. Uh, we get a bit of French as well. Um, Hawk speaks some French. He actually went, uh, he has a book called a piano in the Pyrenees where he buys a house out in France but uh, it's always interesting because he dots some French throughout and so I like to try my hand at it so here he goes uh, le téléphone ne marche pas he said shrugging resignedly nous n'avons pas payé donc ils ont coupé la ligne which means the phone had been cut off the bill hadn't been paid and so it was that the telephone of the country's national tennis center had been disconnected I like this little bit here great example of his kind of sense of humor 20 minutes into our walk, we reach Boulevard Stefan Selma, which has the privilege of being the only street in Moldova to be lit at night. Once again, I was able to enjoy the luxury of illumination, which previously I had taken for granted, and I could now see the buildings which surrounded us. One such edifice was the country's main parliament building, in front of which independence from the USSR was declared in 1991. How I would have loved to have been there to witness that historical moment, if for no other reason than to have been able to stand back and utter the words, they think it's Moldova, it is now. I like this. Uh, our car joined the traffic again. Its passengers all a little shaken, but greatly relieved to see that the danger had been averted. Yora had performed the meek stuff very well. In fact, his meekness had been something of a triumph. It certainly would have won the admiration of Jesus, who had always rated the meek highly. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, he once said in all earnestness. The only problem is that the meek would then reply, oh, I couldn't possibly, you have it. And uh, he gets roped into correcting somebody's uh, English essay. He says, as it happened, the lady's essay was pretty good, grammatically bang on. It was all about how she hoped one day to visit her friends in England who lived in Slough. She was sure it would be a beautiful place. This was her only mistake, but I didn't bother to correct it. I didn't have the heart. I live near Slough. Confirmed, shithole. So I thought this was an interesting thing here. He said, I, he says, I learned that a primitive and unofficial social structure had developed in which patients brought gifts of food of money each time they made a visit to the doctor. They had to. All that was on offer from the government were empty promises and they are difficult to live off. Sometimes the government would pay workers in goods and commodities rather than money. Dina's mother, a pensioner in the countryside, was regularly paid in sugar, rice or flour. Once she even took a carpet instead of half a year's pension. It was quite common for factory workers to receive their salaries in the goods they produced, like boots, step ladders or light bulbs. I was even told of one poor fellow named Vitaly who worked in a factory which made bicycle pumps and all he received at the end of each month were hundreds more of these infernal things which he had to try and sell at the market. Perversely, his survival depended on inflation. I know he's speaking French to somebody because French quite often is the only language they had in common. He says, merci beaucoup, I said, shaking the manager's hand. J'espère que tous vos jours seront assez facile que ce match contre un istru. He smiled at what did all that mean smile and gave a friendly little wave to the camera as he and his entourage made their exit. It means, 
Thank you very much. I hope that all of your games will be as easy as your match against Nestry. He meets a guy called Big Jim as well, which tickled me because there's a guy called Big Jim in my novel, Meat. And he's talking about tennis. He says, it is said that Pete Sampras once broke 14 sets of strings during 14 minutes of practice. And then uh, he says, uh, the national anthem's being sung. And he says, why should God save the Queen? Certainly ahead of anyone else. Were we suggesting that there ought to be some kind of pecking order for God's protective hand? If so, what number was I going to come in at? Number one, the Queen. Number two, Sir Cliff Richard. Number three, Tony Hawks. They get a reference, they're going to see the Giant's Causeway, which I have visited over in Ireland. And then uh, he's just about to go to Israel when something happens. I'm gonna read it out. The selfish accent, the selfish actions of Saddam Hussein nearly messed things up for me. He had incurred the wrath of the Americans by refusing to let UN investigators see if Iraq had as many evil weapons of destruction stashed away as they did. The US decided that airstrikes were necessary and Britain immediately agreed with them in accordance with the special relationship which required them to do exactly that. For a few scary days it looked like things would escalate horribly and that Israel would be targeted by Saddam's Scud missiles just as it had been in the Gulf War. Fortunately for the interests of world peace, Saddam backed down after having the crap bombed out of him, but not before having claimed it as a magnificent victory. This is an excellent tactic to adopt should you ever have the misfortune of being flattened by someone in a pub brawl. Simply pick yourself up and say, well that showed you, and then walk proudly off to nurse your black eye in private. And um, this is interesting too, he says, It has always seemed a great shame to me that the moderate cannot arouse the same passions that the fanatic can. But the fact remains that organised marches are companies by chance of, We'll talk and we'll talk until we find a compromise. Or, let's try and see this from both points of view, shall we? Tend not to set the heart pumping and blood cursing through the veins. The suicide bomber is always going to grab the headline ahead of the decent chap handing in a signed petition. The hunger striker is always going to provide better copy for the newspapers than the bloke who just lays off cheese for a month. The trouble is that the moderate's hands are tied by his very rationality. And so, it has, and so it is that the peace-loving majority are pushed around by fundamentalists, fanatics and extremists. And um, then he talks about going out on New Year's Eve in Israel and uh, his thoughts on New Year's Eve. Kind of different to mine, kind of the same. I just hate New Year's Eve. I think it's stupid. I don't know why we, we celebrate the end of uh, the Gregorian calendar as opposed to like the solstice or something like that, but hey-ho. Uh, a further problem with New Year's Eve is the inevitable feeling that you've made the wrong decision. Invariably on this festive night, you're invited to at least three parties, but you have to plump for only one of them. At 11.30pm, as you find yourself listening to a carpet salesman extolling the virtues of a hard-wearing deep pile and stressing its advantages over a basic linoleum, you just might begin to wonder whether one of the other parties might have been the better option. Presumably this has been the way for centuries. Your average caveman probably saw in the new year by sipping mead and wondering whether he might have been having a better time if he'd gone to Oxdo four caves up. So yeah, overall I did enjoy playing the Moldovans at tennis. Um, sort of mid-tier I guess in terms of where I'd rank it amongst Hawks books. Uh, I gave it a pretty solid 3.5 out of 5 and would recommend if you're looking for something humorous, especially at the moment when the world's gone to shit and you can't travel. So yeah, playing the Moldovans at tennis. So there we have it, that's what I made of playing the Moldovans at Tennis by Tony Hawks. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.